Oh, well, Katie, it is so nice to see you. And um, I think you. I'm, I'm not just speaking for myself when I say that a lot of us are really, really anxious about Afghanistan and what's happening to all the people who've had to be evacuated. And it's some small comfort to us that you're there being your wonderful, warm, friendly, kind pastoral self. And so tell us, just tell us what's happening, what you're doing, what's going on. Yeah, sure. We, um, well, I was here doing my reserve duty anyway, and um, I got uh, sat down in a meeting with our leadership one day a few, few weeks ago, and, and they said uh, real world events are going on and we're going to be um, hosting some guests. And we, as the chapel, are part of their religious accommodation. And um, we're turned to 12-hour shifts, so we're on 24 hours as the chapel staff. We set up prayer tents for people to be able to pray in. We have prayer rugs. There's a men's section and a women's section, uh, or different tents. And we play the call to prayer at the at little areas where people are living and um, make sure the tents are nice. And that's what we're doing for our guests. And at the beginning, it was um, it was kind of exciting because um, there we were just starting out, so there weren't a lot of military people quite there yet to volunteer and to help out. So us chapel folks were pulled into kind of some things like once we were done with the tents and the prayers, we were pulled into some things that we wouldn't normally be part of, and it was uh, escorting people to their tents and helping out with um, the making. Uh, warm water for baby bottles and I got to hold a lot of babies and and just oh, like listen yeah. to people tell me their stories and um you know there were there are lots of uh people who um, from Afghanistan are American citizens and they were visiting their family and kind of got caught up in what was going on and are just going back to the U.S. to go home and that a lot of those people I heard a lot of their stories and it was just, it was great to just be able to sit and listen to people. They wanted to tell you, they wanted to tell you what was going on, the family they had to leave behind that they're worried about. Um, looking forward to see uh, a, one lady had a husband in the U.S. that she just couldn't wait to get back to and, and see him. And so I was like, I can't wait either. You know, so you're feeling all these feelings uh, for people as well. And and then once things kind of calmed down, we got a lot of great volunteers coming in and a lot of um you know, young airmen too, that don't have experience with Afghanistan, like some of us oldies do and helping them learn about culture and respect and, and how to, to welcome people into this space because they are our guests. You know, we're, we're just a stopping point on their way to uh, somewhere safe and somewhere better. So, and, uh, I mean, did you know about Afghanistan and, and the, the people of Afghanistan before all of this happened here? Did you have some kind of training in that or you've been there? or, or? Um, Not necessarily. I had not been deploy, deployed to Afghanistan. I've only been in the military three years. My husband had um, spent time in Kabul. Uh, but again, he was kind of sitting behind a desk doing desky things. But um, he still got out and did stuff. But I did learn a lot uh, from, we have a Muslim chaplain on staff here at Ramstein, and he kind of taught us a lot about um, culture and, and how we can be respectful to people. And then also just listening to other people who have been there and have experiences that has helped a lot too. And, and, and I didn't really think about it till maybe a week or so ago that really the time that Victor and I lived in Niger for two years, um, and that was a predominantly Muslim uh, country and culture and society. And just even like bringing that experience that I had, it that helped a lot with this, you know, and even hearing the call to prayer and playing that, um, providing that for folks, that's what we heard in our neighborhoods, you know, five times a day. So it kind of brought me back to a, a place where I had been before and thought, you know, if I can provide this for people to make them feel uh, comfortable or more at home or more at ease, um, then it's actually, I, I'm on the night shift. So we play the prayer three times during the night and it's, it's probably the most relaxing three minutes of my day because <laughs> I get to I get to stop and pause and also be prayerful as well. So, yeah. And are there lots of kids going through um, the airbase, KD, or on a, on a company? There are lots of kids. Oh, or, um, or, or um, there's a parents. few. There's a few, but we have um, a lot of people in place to take care of folks and and any kids that might have gotten separated from their families. And we've done reunifications where. You know, at the airport, one kid got on one plane and a family got on another. And but we've, you know, we find ways to make that. We're working with all of our 
a wonderful partners, um, the State Department and all that stuff. So people are, are really working together to help people out. It's a very, you know, helpful feeling right now. So, yeah. And you have any idea what will happen to people once they get to the States? I mean, obviously, some of them are American citizens already yeah. and some are family, but a lot are, are not. Any? Yeah. You know? <laughs> Well, I, I don't know exactly um, what's going to happen to people, but when I lived in D.C., I did, I was part of, our church was part of a religious coalition that actually helped house people who were refugees from Afghanistan. So wow. I did, I have worked on that end of things uh, in my past. So I do know we worked with the Lutheran Immigration and Refugee Services, Lutheran Social Services, and there's other agencies around too that do this. So we would get a family assigned to us and we would help them find housing furniture and we would even help with jobs or maybe if they need a car so i know that there are agencies in the u.s that that do help people um get settled when they are when they arrive yeah that's great yeah yeah and i mean we're all feeling pretty helpless i mean what what could you see as the the current need how could we help us as a congregation or as Christians or as just people who want to to care about what's going on in Afghanistan what can we do Katie yeah I think I mean prayer is always my number one response to anything of how can I help uh, prayer is a, a big one I know that um, if people are able to give monetary donations they can seek out agencies like um, Lutheran Immigration and Refugee Services or, or agencies like that that are helping house people and helping people be able to get um, on with their lives and and in a safe place. So um, I know that's in the U.S. I'm not sure exactly what the agencies are in Europe, but I'm sure there are many places that are helping people. And just, you know, continue to be educated about what's happening and what's going on and and learn try to learn more facts. There are, you know, even in our community, there are things that's like, oh, I heard this and I heard that. And, you know, we really need to make sure that we're learning what is actually happening rather than um, you've heard something from somebody else. And so I'd say that's probably the most important thing at the moment. Okay. That's really good. And how long are you going to be there? When, when will we get to get to see you again? <laughs> well, um, my orders go until September 15th. Um, but that is in the middle of our Episcopal Churches in Europe clergy conference. So I might actually, I don't know what I'm going to do, <laughs> um, but I hopefully will be back as soon as I can because I do miss my All Saints community. And I will say to all of you, thank you so much for your support. Um, I read um, an email that Sunny had sent out to the Vestry the other day and it brought me to tears just knowing that I have all of your love and support. And I, and Sunny is, is absolutely fantastic as a boss. I love her so much. And her being, I think, a, a military brat as well, you know, being an army brat, I think she understands the life and what's happening. And she's just, um, she has given me so much um, support and hope that I, I, I just get my energy from all of you. So thank you. <laughs> it's keeping us going. <laughs> You're going off on your, your night shift now. You'll be taking care of people through the night. Goodness yeah. sake. Yeah. And, you know, I, I will just say too, one thing that I also love about this is how much I get to talk to all of the airmen and even soldiers. We have army folks here as well. And I just go around and talk to people and see how they're doing and make sure they're feeling their feelings. And we've set up a, a rest lounge at our South side chapel where people can just come and relax and kind of get away from the, the, the work that's going on and just, and have a time for themselves. And there's been people that have called us in the middle of the night and said, Hey, can I, set up a counseling session. And so we're not forgetting that, you know, our priority also of taking care of our airmen and taking care of, you know, um, our people that are working. We need to make sure that people are, you know, are, are good inside so they can be there to help others as well. So that's, I think, a very important part of this as well. So, yeah. yeah. Tough, and I get to do that at two o'clock in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> no better person. Listen, Katie, we are thinking about you. We're praying for you and we're sending you lots of love and strength for all the work that you do. Thank you for being there on behalf of all of us. And um, we'll see you very soon. Thank all you right. for all your support. Okay. I miss you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.